Vinnie Winford's father was a rich man. When Vinnie Winford was six, his mother gave him his own pony. At 14, she gave him his own sports car. On his 15th birthday, Vinnie Winford's mother raised his allowance to $250 a week. The year he was 19, Vinnie was sent to college. On the first of every month, his mother sent him a check for $2,000. When Vinnie Winford was not quite 21, his father died. Vinnie inherited everything. It's your company, left to you by your father. And you go right upstairs and you walk in and you tell them exactly what you want them to do. I'll see you when I'm through shopping. And I'll expect to hear all about it to the tiniest detail. Go on. And don't be too tough on them. This meeting is convened as a special meeting to consider the purchase of Akron Volt, Akron Volt Thread Company. <clears throat> now, gentlemen, since this first came up, I've given this a great deal of thought. And, uh, well, I'm for it. Because, uh, well, I believe that the purchase of Akron Volt will tie us in closer to the uh, uh, total defense uh, picture, plus uh, the tax picture. Vinny, are you uh, fitting this into the total organization on an amortization or a non-amortization basis? Well, I was thinking more on the level of uh, output, uh, productivity. Vinny, what GPS figures are you using? Ours or the Michelson survey? What difference does it make? Well, Vinny, the difference is, according to Michelson, Akron has a GPS rate of 3.56 per man hours against an industry-wide GPS of 4.71. That's, that's way over what our survey came up with. Well, uh... That's without the new machinery, Brad. You see, you can't make a definitive statement without extrapolating on the curve. Well, uh... You still don't come out ahead unless the courts give us the three-year amortization. Point picking it up without some oh, exactly. oh, 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 oh. Don't you see? Take a look at the point five. Turning capitalization ratio. Research. But I think we have to yes. look ahead. Yes. 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 Good meeting this morning, Vinny. Was it? Funny, isn't it? It's almost as if your father were still running things. Half a dozen times this morning, I had to stop and ask myself, what would Arthur's attitude have been on this? Drop dead. Drop dead! Mr. Winford? Fine. We're fine. To the corporation, boss. To the corporation.
on his way up. All right, come on, you guys. You can do better than that. Come on, come on. Put it in there. Yeah, that's it. You know it's for a good cause, don't you? <laughs> sure. This will be something that will be appreciated the rest of his gay life there. Hey. Adam, darling, what do I know about getting something for Lieutenant Parker? I mean, I have a hard enough time trying to figure out what to get you for your birthday. But, honey, look, we've already got... Wait a minute. $87. $87. Now, just ask yourself, if you were a guy celebrating your 30th anniversary on the force, what would you want? If I were a guy celebrating his 30th anniversary on the force, what would I want? Honey, he's going to be here any second. Look, every guy in the precinct has made a contribution. And every guy in the precinct has an idea what to get. It's a Tower of Babel. All right, but why me? I mean, does anybody else have a girlfriend? Because you're pretty. Oh, come on. Gotta go now. Adam! What gives? Well, it's for us to know and you to find out. That's for us to know and you to find out. Uh, uh, excuse me, are you uh, Detective Adam Flynn? Come on in. Have a seat. What can I do for you? Well, it's about my girlfriend, Judy Hill. The last we saw of her was about three days ago. And she disappeared like. Uh-huh. Okay. Hill. H I double L? Yeah. Your name? Your name is? Uh Red. R E D D. Ruby Red. It's my stage name. I'm in show business, but it's legal. Judy and me. We live in the same rooming house. Now this Miss Hill, is she in show business too? We're hostesses. I mean, temporarily we're working as hostesses. Judy and me, we work in the same place. At a restaurant, a nightclub? We dance hostesses, you know, on the, at the Tango Palace on the 42nd Street off 8th Avenue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the last time we saw Judy was at work three days ago. those sick cats out there? They're just two guys need a place to rehearse. Are they paying? No. Well, you know, honey, there's nothing doing around this place till six o'clock tonight, so what difference does it make? This is a business that I'm running. This is not a home for stray side men. Will you quit with the hands, Bet? I just asked you how the board meeting went this morning. It went. I'd like to get some of those brass things with spikes on them that those Roman boxers used to wear, and I'd like to jam it into those lawyers' faces and wipe that smug expression off. Last week's gross, net. Now, this week's through Thursday, we have our bar gross. Vinny. Vinny, I hate it when you get into one of these moods. Vinny, if they hurt you that much, just walk out. Walk them. out where? The business goes on. The money keeps coming in. The only difference it would make is that they could do whatever they want to do without having to tell me first. I won't give them the satisfaction. <laughs> Oh, 
I don't want to hurt you, Diane. I don't want to hurt anybody. It's something that comes over me. I can't help it. I just can't help it. Officer, do I have to listen to any more of this? Now, I fired this girl three days ago, and she's obviously trying to cause trouble for me. He's lying, I swear to you, he's... What did you do with her, you murderer, you? I die. Uh, could you get her an aspirin or a drink? I don't want a drink. You think I'm crazy or something? Look, Mr. Flint, you got to make him tell you what he did with her. Ruby, look, you saw the payroll in the W-2s. Ask the other girls in there. They'll tell you. Just ask them. Okay. Mr. Winford, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to see some of the other girls. I die. Would you ask uh, Dolly, Wilma, Tony? And Ginny Barr, too. Ruby, anybody you want, darling. Uh, ask them to come in here, will you, Dolly? Sure. Miss Doyle, one minute. If you don't mind, Mr. Winford, I think I'd like to see the girls where they are, alone. Ruby. Mr. Flint, may I speak to you for a moment? Sure. Go ahead, Ruby. I'll be right with you. Mr. Flint, you probably think it's rather odd someone like me taking an interest in a place like this. I mean, with the kind of name my family has and the kind of money we have. Some men like yachts. Some breed horses like Calumet. <laughs> I get a kick out of running a dance hall. What I'm trying to say is, I don't like to see one of my fillies get sick either. And when they do, I like to take care of them. Now, our Ruby's sick. I think she needs medical help. Uh, Diet pen, please. That's very big of you, Mr. Winford. I don't think Calumet Farms could do any more for their fillies. Ruby, listen to me. Sometimes people get ideas, and those ideas take over their whole lives. Mr. Flint, Judy Hill's as real as you and me. The kind of ideas I'm talking about seem very real, but you have to believe in evidence. Thirteen people in there just told us they never heard of that friend of yours. I think maybe we ought to go over to Bellevue and talk to some of the doctors. Judy Hill's friend. There's no Judy Hill. Mike, I just got the preliminary report on Miss Red from Bellevue. They're inclined to believe there's nothing wrong with her. Except one. Her hobby is making the New York Police Department look for imaginary girlfriends. And two, if we weren't so sure there wasn't a Miss Hill, the doctors at Bellevue might believe her story that there is. Adam, can't you see? My desk is loaded with work. Period. End of discussion. You take a look at this, Mike. I want you to see it. Benny Winford's record. You're losing me. First, we're talking about Judy and Ruby. What is all this about Vinnie Winford? Just a minute, Mike. Look, 1953, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Well, what are you handing me the folder for if you're going to give me a verbal report? Will you look at this? Case dismissed. Yes, but look at this. Look up here. He stabbed his governess with a pair of scissors. By the time it got to court, the governess withdrew the charges. I guess the family bought her off. Where's it say that? 1955, breaking and entering. 1956, oh, this is a vintage year for him. Malicious mischief, suspected of pandering, another A and B. Say, Mr. Winford had a very interesting childhood, didn't he? How come the heir and owner of one of America's largest fortunes is running a cheap dime a dance hall? So make a point. Okay. It's his word against the red woman's. And his social standing doesn't necessarily make him the one that's selling the truth. Adam, I don't understand you sometimes. Who was assigned to the case? You were. Who decided who was telling the truth and who was lying? You did. So what's this all of a sudden about who's got social standing? 
So we all know that Mr. Rich Boy is a louse, and poor slobby Miss Ruby Red has a heart of gold. But if there's a Judy Hill, she has to have a bank account, or a mailing address, or a driver's license, or a police record. Come in. Or a payroll record, or a social security card. Nothing. Or a landlady, or a girlfriend besides Miss Ruby Red, or... What nothing? I had Frank check the cabaret card registrations. <laughs> or the cabaret card. Or the cabaret card. <laughs> I just don't know. I just don't know. Please leave me alone. Adam, maybe we better cut this off right now. She's had a pretty rough shock, real or imagined. <laughs> Please, can I go home now? I want to go home. Please, can I, can I go? Ruby, I've got a hunch about this, but I can't do anything without proof. Look, I'm a policeman, and a policeman can't move without evidence. I want you to listen to me. I really don't believe Judy Hill was something out of your imagination. No, Mr. Frank, she wasn't. Believe me, she wasn't. Then think and think hard. Wasn't there somebody else that knew her other than the girls at the dance hall no. or the landlady? No. Look, maybe she had a special boyfriend. No, no, Judy. Judy kept pretty much to herself. I mean, even at the, the Tango Palace, she didn't have a regular boyfriend like some of the girls. Well, didn't she ever get any mail? Maybe you can remember a postmark or the name of the person that wrote to her. No. Oh, did she have a bank account? No. Maybe under a different no. name? No, no, no. I tried to get Judy to get a, a bank account like me. I said, Judy, for crying out loud for 10 cents a check, you can be a support instead of borrowing money from me. She always paid it back. I mean, the first of the week, she always paid it back. What, Ruby? Ruby? Oh, she... Two weeks ago, she she needed a double saw bark and what? A check. I wrote her a check. And I made up my mind I'm going to quit, and nothing you say is going to stop me. Jimmy, if you want to quit, you quit. Oh, gee, Mister Winthrop. I didn't know you'd take it so nice. <laughs> you have a great record with me. I checked your books. You're one of the most popular little winners I've got. Di, Jenny thought that uh, I was going to be mad at her. Why? Because love comes to the Tango Palace. Ginger Doll, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Old Uncle Vinny's going to give you a dowry. <laughs> take your best two weeks and I'll double them. How's that to start a marriage on, huh? Oh, gee, Mr. Winthrop, I, I never expected that. Thanks. Forget it. That's the least I can do for one of the best little ponies I've got. And that's not all. I've got something for that lucky guy, too. Vinny. I mean that I want him to know all about what a gem he's getting. Mr. Winthrop. Oh, here we are. Dolores, Penny, Jenny. Ginger Jenny Barr, alias Ginger Barker, Gloria Barker, and Gertrude Barkowski. It's all right, Mr. Winfield. I get the picture. Michigan Institute for Women. Chino, women's section. Joliet, Illinois. And the best part is the tagline. <laughs> Broke parole from uh, Joliet by leaving state and coming here. Compound that by uh, working on a phony cabaret license. You got that for me! Ginny, I don't remember anything like that, and I'm sure no one else will either. Now, about leaving your happy little home here. We all love you. Sit down! Did I tell you I was through with you? I'm gonna... Let me go! I'm killer! Take it easy. Take it easy, Joe. All right. That's it. Ginger doll, 
Don't you know it's not polite to leave before old Uncle Vinny's through talking to you? Now, all I wanted to say was you may go. Go on. You may go. That is, until 5, 5, 5, 555 sharp, I will look for your hot little body in seat number 12, wearing your highest heels and your prettiest smile. Nobody does that the way you do, Duchess. Nobody has hands like my girl. <laughs> Your girl. Someday there'll be somebody else who'll do it just as well. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And that's just how it should be. Just exactly how it should be. Nobody's ever going to say that Rosalind Winford was one of those awful old mamas who kept her baby boy tied to any old apron strings. Nobody at all. Stop that. You just stop making your poor old mother feel as if she were still young, pretty Rosalind Susanna Petrie of Seven Oaks, and not a lonely old widow woman, you hear? Mm? Guess come to think of it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Guess I haven't noticed. What? Crow's feet. Crow's feet? <laughs> Oh, you are just too awful for words to describe. Oh. Scaring your poor, poor old, old white-haired widow mama. <laughs> now, come on, Duchess, fess up. You asked for it. All that shameless fishing. Now, once and for all, hmm. you don't have one line or blemish in that cute little face of yours. Uh -huh. And you are, without a doubt, the vainest, most devastating, Little hussy this side of the Mason-Dixon line. <laughs> <laughs> 7.30, I've got to be going. Oh, darling. Surely you don't have to go down to that place every single evening. I mean, you leave me here alone. Sweetheart, and... we've been through all this before. The Tango Palace is as much a business to me as any other corporation in the Winford Empire. And like all the others, if I don't keep a tight rein on it, I can be robbed blind. Oh. Darling, a dance hall. And Duchess, that dance hall is mine from scratch. You tell me what else I've got that is. Oh, now, really? give us a kiss. Gentleman, to see you, sir. Says his name's Flint, and he's a... Thank you, Charlotte. You tell Mr. Flint I'll be right there. Yes, sir. <sighs> Press agent. I told him to drop by. I'd take him down to the Tango Palace. One of those people. Mm. Now, Duchess, don't wait up for me. I'll probably be very late. What is this, some kind of joke? Well, if you can get a laugh out of a check made out to and endorsed by Miss Judith Hill, enjoy yourself. Five will get you six if the poor thing endorsed it herself. Well, you lose. We ran down the owner of the drugstore who cashed it. His description of Judith Hill matches the one Ruby gave us to a T. So there's a Judith Hill. She never worked for me. Gentlemen, I am more than happy to cooperate with the police in any way that I can. But because some poor sick girl pulls a disappearing friend out of a hat and says that she worked at the Tango Palace. Lieutenant, I'm a very busy man. We appreciate that, Mr. Winford. We appreciate your coming down here. Then you're through with me now. We'd like to clear this up, too. We have Miss Ruby Red coming down here to the station house to talk to us. She ought to be here any time. According to her landlady, she left about 20 minutes after you fellas called her. 
She packed her clothes and her dolls, her works, and she took off. Where? What I want to know is why. She blew town and that's it. But why? Adam, did you ever figure that Miss Ruby Red put on a black wig and some stage makeup and cashed a check at the drugstore herself? She likes to dramatize. Adam, believe me, she blew town of her own free will when she saw that her story was going to get blown to bits. Look, Mike, why did she come here in the first place? You tell me why we get thousands of crank calls every year and I'll tell you why she came here. Parker speaking. Hello, Livy. Yes, he's behaving, but bad. Where are you going? I'll take it here. Frank. Hi, baby. Well, listen, Libby, there's a couple of big ears nearby, so don't say anything sexy. <laughs> what, an empty stomach? All right, Santa, you little reindeers come up with a few ideas. You ready? Sure. How about a uh, four-suit of leather grip? Libby. Libby, including sports coat, he couldn't fill it. Okay. Uh, silver wristwatch engraved on the back to Lieutenant Park. Libby. Libby, I, I know of six of them that he's got for sure. Okay. <sighs> Tool leather desk set. With onyx pen holder. And Libby, with everything that's on his desk, Libby, who'd see it? All right. Moroccan pocket secretary. With matching attache case. And a card case. Room enough for uh, two dozen pictures, cards, licenses. Libby. Libby. Um, uh, Libby. But licenses. Licenses. Well, hot dog. I knew I'd come up with something. Uh, no, honey, he's got all of that. It's just the idea. Uh, look, Libby, I gotta run. It's good thinking. I'll call you back later, honey. What did you... Frank, we're gonna do some license checking. What license? For what? For just one that isn't kosher. I don't care what kind of power you have. I want to know where you come off. Mr. Winford, if you want to try and stop us, you'd better call up your lawyer and see if he can give you some help through the courts. Look, I don't know what you're doing, but we've been spot checked before. And all a spot check calls for is just checking the girl against her picture and her name on the license. Look, miss, if you think you're qualified for the police force, why don't you fill out an application for civil service? Now, we're going to get to those girls and we're ready for them. Tell you what you're doing. This is harassment, pure and unadulterated. Mr. Winford, you ought to be an expert at that. I guess if anyone can spot harassment, you sure can. Meaning what? Meaning that's how I think you got Ruby Red to leave town. Meaning that's how I think you got those 15 girls out there to swear there never was a Judy Hill. You prove that and you can take me to court. But if you're just talking, watch out! Because that shield that you wear isn't going to protect you from a libel suit. Mr. Winford, if your secretary just went out to round up the girls, you can tell her we're ready for them now. She can send them in one by one. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Dunlap. So, what do you expect? Sally Rand, maybe? Frank, send in the next one. You can go, Miss Dunlap. Thank you. Adam, we 
They've got three canary fish outside, and they're singing. You're going ahead. Tell our care I'll be right there. Are they done already? Well, look, I got rid of the three with the phony... I don't get it. Three. Three. Don't just stand there, get him! Get him! Parole breaking is one thing, working on a phony cabaret card is another. But an accessory, maybe even murder. You're in the big leagues now. You're out of your ever-living skull. Jenny, you don't have to say a thing. As your lawyer, well, I Well, you are not you. my lawyer, so shut your big mouth. Jenny! Mr. Winford sent me to help you. How can Listen, I do that? Listen, I have had all the help I have wanted from Mr. Winford. Do I have to have him around? You've heard the lady, Mr. Linda? That woman is entitled to counsel. Jenny. Out, louse. Jenny, remember one thing. Someday you'll be out. Mr. Winford is a rich man. Listen, Mr. You he can watch yourself. You can be disbarred for that. I was merely stating a fact, officer. A simple fact. Nothing more. Jenny, I want you to know your rights. Anything you say here now can be held against you in court. And you are entitled to counsel. Can you give me a break? On the parole jumping. I can try. <laughs> oh, I bet the chocolate bunny. <laughs> All my life, I've been looking for someone to give me a straight answer to anything. Something. What happens? I always meet some joker who can try. Jenny, I don't want to make any promises I can't keep. <sighs> I don't know. I guess I can't do any worse with a can't try. Jenny, is there a Judy Hill? Not be my son, sir. Vincent has a key of his own. Oh, Rufus, do come in. Forgive my waking you. Oh, not at all. This is also awfully absurd. This is the uh, young man, the one I told you about. Now, now, Rosalind, you just uh, sit yourself down. There's nothing that can't be taken care of, I'm sure. Go on now, just sit down. Ah. <laughs> uh. Kate is the name, young man, old friend of the family. Also, do? their lawyer. Detective Adam Flint. Ah. Uh, won't sit down? Thank you. you. Mind telling me what it is that Vinnie is supposed to have done? I'm sorry, Mr. Cates, I can't do that until he arrives. You see, Rufus? You see? Pardon me? I'm talking about your rudeness. Mrs. Winford, I'm not a guest in your house. I'm a police officer here on police business. No, Rosalind, the young man's quite right. He's doing his job just the way he's supposed to. What police business? I'm Vinnie's mother. Surely you can tell me. Sorry, I can't do that. Officer, Vinnie is not a criminal. I don't want him treated like a common criminal. Mrs. Winford, my job is black and white. Whenever I'm given a writ ordering me to arrest someone, I don't have three or four different attitudes. I have one, the same for everybody. I'm sorry about that. I do believe in special privilege for special people. 
My son is the head of a very important industrial organization. I'm sure he is. And I want him treated with respect. What do you call respect, Mrs. Winford? If we were to stop your son while he was drunk driving, are we supposed to drop all charges the moment we see the name Winford printed on the license? Is that the kind of respect you mean? Is that what you've got against him, drunken driving? You say you don't want your son treated like a common criminal. Well, assault and battery, breaking and entering, pandering, these are all very common crimes. And I'm sure you know your son has a record of every one of them. You're just trying to drag him down to your level, that's all. Look, my level is a level of a working police officer. Now, let's let it go at that. No offense intended, young man. I disagree. The things Mrs. Winford said were offensive, and I think intended. No, I don't think any of us is being very objective yeah, about I'm this. I'm not but being objective. Why oh, should I? Dear, I'm you're his very mother. upset. And it's I think quite he's just being a little too thin skinned and oversensitive. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, bravo, bravo, bravo. Hey, where have you been? Come here. I'm sorry I'm late, Duchess. Well, Mr. Gates, I hope Mumsy didn't get you up on my account. Darling, this man says. Darling, he's going to take you down to the police station. Well, Mr. Flint. That's Vincent's here now. Let's hear these charges. Or is this just a fishing expedition? Listen, Flint, please, Vincent, let me handle this. Now, officer, we're waiting. You're counting on anything Jenny Barr said. Vincent, be quiet. I said I'll handle this. <laughs> Mr. Cates, let's get one thing straight right now. No one's handling this but me. Vincent, Petrie Winford. Oh, darling, he didn't mean handle it exactly. He meant he's going to help you. Didn't and the best help I can give now is to tell you to shut your mouth, Vincent until you and I have had a private talk. Now, these charges against my client, if you please. Your client? Who hired you as my lawyer? You may be a big man on Wall Street, but in my personal corporation, you'd have to have a ticket to even get in the door. Now, darling, <laughs> please stop it. Now, what are these charges? We have three witnesses all willing to swear you helped them acquire false cabaret cards. A crummy little rap like that? A misdemeanor? <laughs> I admit to that gladly, happily. So what? Who cares? You stupid little... I told you to keep your mouth shut. Now you've talked yourself into being booked. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. So I'm going to get booked. Oh, big deal. Booked? Yes, booked. Arrested, searched, fingerprinted, mugged and put into a cell. Luther! Did you hear that? I'm going to be booked, Luther. I'm going to go to jail. Darling, Vinnie, come here, please. Don't worry, Duchess. My lawyer will have me out in 45 minutes. Just a minute. Just a minute. You figuring on a 45 minute stay, too? Luther, don't you worry. You here? I'll have you up by tomorrow. Good night, Mother. Respect him. Nineteen thirty two, A and B. Nineteen thirty three, breaking and entry. Nineteen thirty five, two years on another B and E. Since then, nothing. Nineteen thirty seven till now, not even a traffic ticket. That's a long time. Look, Luther, I saw you got that gun last night. Winford isn't with it. He isn't with a gun wrap. He isn't with accessory to kidnapping. Accessory to murder? He didn't kill her. Who, Judy Hell or Ruby? Luther, why don't you make it easy on yourself? Ginny Barr's already told us all we need to know to nail him. What do you want from me, then? Time. They're all right so far, but we want to be sure that they stay that way. Luther, you're wasting your loyalty. If you were worth it, you wouldn't be here sweating it out now. You're here, Luther. Where's the guy you're protecting? Out on bail. Cut it, mister. Now let me tell you something. I ain't no brain. No MD. I'm a punk. I don't kid myself. But this boy, Vinny, give him a break. He's, he's okay. Okay by who? Slapping girls around? That's okay? No, I, you don't understand. 
You want to know something? You ever watch little kids sometimes in the, in the back of the limousine? Well, it isn't exactly one of my hobbies. Everybody thinks, boy, the lucky little crumb. He's got it made. You know, some... I never seen kids more miserable than some of those kids in the back seat. The old man's made the loot. These kids, they grow up. Everybody says, yeah. He'd be selling papers. His old man wasn't J.P. Gotbox. It's like they... They always gotta be proven something. Gotta find... find shoes to fit. Like Winford? His old man... He knew how it was. Before he died, he, he said to me, Luther, watch out for him. Like, you know, he, he thinks I, I know the ropes. Someday, he says, boy, it'll be all right. Some watching out, I don't know. But he could, he could still make it. If you give him a break, if that bloodsucker he's got for an old lady will let go for just once, just once, then maybe that kid wouldn't be... Wouldn't be what, Luther? Taking it out on every other woman? He ain't bad. He, he's sick sometimes. Do you think it's helping him to let him run wild? You think you're doing him a favor? You think it's helping him to let him kill somebody else the way he killed Judy Hill? He didn't kill her. He, he hit her a little. But he's paying the hospital bills. Don't try and say he killed her. He didn't kill her. She's under heavy sedation. But when it wears off, she'll be in a lot of pain. So I'd advise you to call a family physician when you get her home. I think you're out of your mind to do this. Look, I told you that I run things. If you don't like it, just take off. That's what you think. They can throw the book at me. They'll build it up. They've all got it in for me. They've all got it in for me. There's no way out of this, Diana. Vinny, listen to me, will you? I want you to know something. I love you. I love you. Vinny, can you hear me? I love you. got on you is assault and battery. You don't have to run. Judy isn't going to testify against you. You can buy her off just like you bought off the landlady. You bought off Ruby. Vinny, you can buy them all off.
stay away from me! You stay away from me! I warned you to stay away from me! But you got no place else to run. And don't make us hurt you. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump, and then you're all gonna be sorry! You're all gonna be sorry for what you've done to me! You're all gonna be sorry! You're gonna be sorry! <laughs> Something else, Mike. Oh, now, isn't that adorable? <laughs> That's something to remind you you're getting older, Mike. Everybody's names are inscribed on it, including mine as the head cheerleader of the Mike Parker fan club. Well, say something. It's almost as good as the wooden one I had when I walked my first beat on Fordham Road 25 years ago. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Screen Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures, produced by Herbert B. Leonard.